Hello everyone, this is Samuel here with Eagle Investors, here to talk about diversifying with complex strategies. Now, diversification is critical when trading. Complex option strategies allow for more choice and ability to balance a portfolio. Now, there are countless combinations and numbers of different option positions one can enter, but we'll focus on some of the major and usable strategies. Now first, why, why diversify with complex strategies? Now, diversifying with complex strategies can help hedge the major four option Greeks, you know, balancing delta, theta, gamma, and vega. And this allows for a more dynamic exposure to these different, to these different Greeks. If you haven't already, make sure to, to watch the hedging options video where we discuss these major four Greeks. And, and understand that, you know, if you're all always just buying calls and buying puts, you might be exposed to, to exposure that you don't want to be. For example, you know, you, you're completely on one side on, on theta and time decay. And on Vega, you know, if you're only buying calls and puts, you're, you're long volatility and you might not have the underlying thesis that volatility in the marketplace, or at least the underlyings that you're trading are going to increase in volatility. And as volatility is mean reverting, depending on where you are in the cycle, this can be you know, an, important, an important thing to consider. It's not just you're bullish or bearish on an underlying, but there's a lot of more factors at play when it comes to option pricing. Now, diversifying with complex strategies also can help you size correctly, particularly with you know, smaller accounts under five or $10,000, you know, sizing, for success and sizing critically is, is important to mitigate your drawdowns and to, to minimize risk without sacrificing returns by only trading with, you know, under 5% of your portfolio in a given position and ideally, you know, two or 3%. So if you look at an option, you know, like Tesla, you might see a four or $5,000 option. So unless you have an account that's, you know, in excess of a hundred or $200,000, you likely are overexposed if you're if you're buying calls or buying puts on on that option, as opposed to you know just not trading those underlyings that are larger like Tesla and Amazon. You can look at you know spreads or other different strategies that can allow you to gain the exposure that you want without without being overexposed in terms of you know the delta value you're taking on and the capital at risk. So diversifying with complex strategies also helps manage risk. So long calls and puts are only good if you're extremely bullish or bearish. Now there's a lot of different other positions that you could put on for any different number of, of market theses, whether or not you think a particular underlying is going to only increase a few dollars in, in the next few weeks. Or if you're leaning more bearish to neutral, you might look at you know credit put spreads or credit call spreads if you're more uh, you're bullish to neutral for credit put spreads and bearish neutral for credit call spreads or if you're just neutral in general you know you're not able to trade on that with just long calls and long puts but you'd be able to sell iron condors or go short strangles or straddles or or even just be naked calls or puts depending on you know if you have any if have any stock or if you just wanna have that naked exposure. So here's a few, a few different strategies here. Um, now you can see the simple ones, buying a call, the premium, the max premium you can lose is 100% infinite gain. Buying a put, max premium you lose is 100% near infinite gain. You know, the underlying can only go to, to zero, so it's not infinite, but it's unlikely that depending on what you're trading, it will go to zero. Now, if you buy a call spread, that's where you buy the call option here, and then you sell a call option on top of that. And what that does is it makes your, your buy-in or the premium you pay into the debit much cheaper to start, but it does cap your upside potential, right? So you know every, every dollar move over that short call option that you sold on top of your long call, you don't actually increase in terms of your, your P&L for that position. Now selling a put is just the opposite of a put, 
not, not a complex strategy, but what is a good way to, to enter a stock position if you're looking to, to lower your, your cost basis and collect capitalize on you know, an increase in, in volatility in a particular underlying. Now selling a put spread, however, is a good bullish neutral position. You know, if the stock's trading at 100, you could sell the 95-90 put spread. And what that does is, you know, as long as the underlying stays above 95, you collect the maximum premium or the initial credit in its full amount. Buying the put spread is just like buying the call spread where you maximize your, or you, you define your max profit potential less than, you know, the, the max profit potential of buying the put where it could go to zero. You maximize it based on where you sell that put and you drastically reduce the amount or you just reduce the amount of initial buy-in. Selling the call is probably the most risky position if you don't own the underlying stock as there's infinite loss that you could experience as the stock could theoretically continue to go up and you're you're down $100 for every dollar over that, essentially. And selling the call spread, however, is a good way to, to take a more neutral to bearish position on an underlying security without having that undefined risk. So you're defining your risk because you're, you're buying that call on top of the sold call that you have. So you're still able to collect the, the premium, the short volatility, but you don't have infinite risk like a naked call option. Selling a straddle is a great, um, but also risky, um, undefined risk, neutral portfolio or position where you sell a call and you sell a put at the same exact strike price and same expiration. Selling a strangle is the same thing, uh, except your you know strangle between the call and the put. So the strike prices are different. And essentially you'll see here, if there's very little move in the underlying security, you'll realize a max profit. And with the, with the straddle, there's one point where you have the max profit, and then there's like a range where you're still positive on the on the position. So this is great if if the volatility is is overbid and volatility being mean reverting, you believe that you want to be short volatility. So you sell the call, you sell the put, you're you're neutral in terms of your deltas, hopefully, and now you're just capitalizing on you know the the theta carry as well as the volatility reversion if, if it does so happen. Now, long iron butterfly and long iron or long iron condor, similar positions, just depending on the, the strike prices here, but it's um, essentially here two, two separate spreads. So a call spread and a put spread put together, you'll see you capitalize on this when, when the underlying stays in between these strike prices. So buying the straddle and strangle, it's the opposite, your long volatility, you want the underlying to move in a big way, whether it's up or down, you'll capitalize either way. Uh, and then the same short iron condor and short iron butterfly are the opposite, the opposite is the long ones. Now, one thing, one thing worth noting here is, you know, buying a, a strangle is actually like like a long iron condor. So I think they flipped these here, where you know short iron condors are are essentially defining the risk on selling a strangle, and you capitalize on you know when the underlying stays in the middle. Moving on though, let's talk about vertical spreads. This can be you know it's a complex strategy in the sense that there's more than one leg, but it's simple enough to understand and can be you know very great for new traders to, to experience and to get into, as well as just understand that everything shouldn't be a long call or a long put. So to set up a vertical spread, you essentially take a long call or a long put, and then you add a short call or put to the long. So let's say you, you, you add a short call or put to a long call or put or you add the long call or put to the short call or put to either create a debit or credit position. So now why add this the second leg? So vertical spreads cap the upside as well as downside. So for debit positions, you're limiting your, your maximum 
potential you can you can make, but you're you're also minimizing the buy-in and the theta decay. And for credit positions, you're you're taking an undefined risk position like a naked call or a naked put, and you're defining that by purchasing the call or you're purchasing the put at a farther out strike price to drastically reduce you know, the margin requirement as well as the risk in an outlier event. So these can form neutral to bullish or bearish positions and really fit a thesis. Instead of being having to be extremely bullish on a position, you might think the position will just increase in value from the exact point it's at. Or so then you could, you know, you could buy the debit call spread at the money. Or you might think that you know it's bullish to, to neutral and you might want to sell the, the credit put spread. So bull call spreads, also known as buying the call spread or in the long call spread, and you, you buy a call here and you sell a call. So again, you cap that upside potential. Bull put spread, it's more neutral to bullish position as you sell a put, but then you buy the put to limit your, your max um, um, loss. Bear put spread, it's it's like a put, you know, you buy the put here but then you sell a put on top of that to limit your maximum potential return, but also minimize the buy-in. And a bear call spread, it's, it's like you sell the call, but it's not an undefined risk position because you buy the call on top of that. So it's favorable in that sense. And a great beginner strategy, two complex options. Well, iron condors are also great in the sense that, in the sense that you know, you're, you're taking a debit or a credit spread, and you're putting them together to create a neutral strategy. So you take a debit put spread and a debit call spread to create a long iron condor, or you take a credit put spread like here where you sell the put and you buy the put and a credit call spread where you sell the call and you buy the call and you create, create this iron condor, which is four legs, you know, one, two, three, four, and cap is max max profit when you know the underlying is in between the two short the two short strikes now the benefits of an iron condor as i mentioned it's a neutral strategy where it doesn't matter if the underlying goes up a little bit or down a little bit or stays exactly where it is you'll capitalize on that on that move now it's also a short volatility position so you can capitalize on volatility movements as volatility is mean reverting you know, it might be overbid and you and you may have the thesis that volatility should contract. So instead of taking a directional position with that thesis, like a short, short call or a short put, you can take that neutral position, try to eliminate the market risk, but capitalize on the volatility expectations. It's also a defined risk strategy, unlike selling a strangle or a straddle, where if the underlying goes up, 100% you might find yourself you know bankrupt now with this you know the maximum you can lose and and that's that's good to know especially as a beginner where management's important but if you fail to manage your maximum loss is still capped so there's minimum drawdowns now straddles and strangles again are are just like iron condors without that, that second leg on each of the other ends. So you either buy both a call and a put at the same strike price and expiration to form a long straddle for out of the money calls and puts and makes a, a strangle. Or do you sell both the call and the put for the same strike and expiration to form a short straddle? Now, when the risks, you know, when, to when and the risks of a straddle slash strangle. So long straddle is a long volatility position. So you might want to take that when you believe volatility will, will expand. And a short straddle is a short volatility position. It's oftentimes used when volatility is particularly bid up from external market events and moves or an event such as earnings where volatility is bid up beforehand from speculators and hedgers purchasing long calls and long puts where volatility always gets crushed you know, upon earnings release. So selling straddles and strangles, you know, if done properly can be a very efficient and effective strategy, but it's not without risks. So be very cautious when selling as this is an undefined risk position. Now, again, that means if you're, if you're short a strangle upon earnings and the underlying goes up 
you're, you're very likely to, to be down many hundreds of percent and more than the credit that you collected at the start. Now there's a million different other strategies. So, you know, you can build any thesis and mix purchasing or writing calls and puts at various strikes and expirations to gain exposure exactly where you want it with the payoff that you want and that the market is willing to, to give. So we're looking at an option chain and seeing all the different strikes and expirations and all the different underlines. You can even do cross product, you know, cross product positions and, and Paris trading and, and things of that nature to get even more complex on top of, you know, all of these million combinations in a given option chain. So some other examples, calendar and diagonal spreads. Uh, it's also known as a time spread where, you know, your, your spread between a long call and a, and a short call or a long put and a short put isn't, you know, necessarily just between the strike prices, but the expiration cycles you know, butterflies and broken wing butterflies. These can be interesting payoff diagrams and synthetic long and short stocks. So you might wanna be long a hundred shares of Apple stock, but you might not want to have to put up $17,000 in, um, you know, in buying power. Or if you have 50% margin account, um, you know, half of that. So you could, you buy the call option and you sell the put option at the same strike and it has the, it's considered a long stock and a synthetic long and has the same exact payoff and is oftentimes much cheaper. So you have greater leverage. So there's risks to be associated with greater leverage, but in the sense that you can minimize and, and use your account accordingly, if hedged properly, there's, it's very advantageous to, to not have that capital tied up in certain areas. So in summary, complex strategies may be more suitable depending on your market thesis or portfolio needs. And understanding the many options and their corresponding suitability increases the tools one can use to construct a balanced portfolio. I encourage you to watch our videos on, on option spreads to start off with as, as this is you know, a great strategy that beginners in options can implement or even individuals that have been trading options for a long time but have just stuck with those debit long calls and long puts, they may wanna use spreads in certain circumstances to increase their breadth of knowledge and ability to, to hedge and position themselves. Thank you everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video.